properties of limits. And y'all can read that for yourself. It's on your notes. Let's talk about the limit properties. Now, these properties are super important, and you will be using them throughout these limits and all the way through the AP exam. If you have a constant value and you've got a limit as x approaches c of some constant k, your answer is always going to be that constant k because the limit is not going to change. Your y value is not going to change. Your identity, in other words, the limit as x approaches c of some x value, your value is always going to be c simply because this is the line y equals x. Of course, that's a poorly drawn line. I can't draw, but you get the idea. If you go over to x equals 4 and then go up, the y value is 4 as well. That's why you have y equals x. And so you have the same value there. If you trace along from the left and the right, you get the same y value. Now, let's look at 3. 3 is telling you that if you have some constant value multiplied to your function, you can pull that b value or that constant value out and rewrite this to be b times your limit. And that can make your limit much easier to work with if you'll do that. And then for summer difference, Notice if you have two functions added or subtracted together inside a limit, you can break this apart and make it two separate limits, which is much easier to work with. The same is true with multiplication. You can pull those two apart, assuming that we are continuous. And the same is true for 6, and I want y'all to put L'Hopital's rule here. I know y'all don't know what L'Hopital's rule is yet. However, this is big for L'Hopital's rule. It's spelled L-Hospital, kind of. It's called L L'Hopital. So it's L'Hopital's rule is going to be using that right there quite a bit. That's how you prove that it's in L'Hopital's form, blah, 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 making your life easier. And then the power rule. Notice that you can move that power out. Do the limit and then raise your answer to that power. That's a lot easier. And then your composite function, you can move that composite out. Do the limit and then say F of that value. Most of the time you're gonna get F of a number which is going to be the actual function value. The actual function value. And then the root rule. That's where you can move that root out. Do your limit and then do the root of your answer. And that, again, is a lot easier to work with. All right, let's look at example 1A. 
Example 1A tells us we've got the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x plus g of x. So f of x plus g of x, let's break this apart. This is one where it's beneficial to say, well, this is the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x plus the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of g of x. So you can look at them coming in from the right of two separate functions. You've separated it now. And so the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x is 6. Do y'all remember doing that? Okay. What's the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of g of x? 8. So if I add these, what is this limit? 14, isn't it? Okay. Let's try part B. Let's expand this all out. So we would have 3 times the limit as x approaches 5 of f of x minus 2 times the limit as x approaches 5 of g of x. So it looks like we're going to have 3 times, what is that limit value? 2. two minus 2 times what? 4. So we're going to have 6 minus 8, which is? Negative 2. Okay, so for C, we're going to have the limit as X approaches negative 5 from the left of F of X minus the limit as X approaches negative 5 from the left of g of x. So we've expanded it. So the limit as x approaches negative 5 from the left of f of x. What do y'all get there? 3 minus <laughs> Minus, and I got 4 for the other one. Did y'all get 4? And so 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Alright, so for part D, we have 3 times the limit as X approaches negative 7 of f of x and make sure you make your fraction line pretty large that way we can tell that there's a limit on top and then a limit on bottom we have a limit as x approaches negative 7 of g of x equals. So in the numerator, it's going to be 3 times. What did y'all get for the top? 3 times 5, which is 15. 
and then the denominator, the limit as x approaches negative 7 of g of x, I got 3. Did y'all get 3? And then 15 over 3 is 5. So in part E, we will bring out the 4. If I can get my pen to write. We will bring out 4. And then we will say times the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x times the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. And now you go through and you're going to multiply each one of these. So we have 4 times the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is going to be 6, but the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x, well, that's not going to exist. If you notice from the left and from the right of g of x at 3, you have this going on and so from the left from the right they are not meeting and so you end up with does not exist so for f here we have the limit as x approaches 3 negative 3 sorry of f of x squared and so the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x negative 3 of f of x is going to be negative 6 and negative 6 all squared is 36 all right so we have the square root of 8 times the limit as x approaches 4 of g of x. I need to make my square root a little longer. And so, <coughs> excuse me. My limit as x approaches 4 of g of x. Why did I write a 4 in there? I'm sorry. So of g of x, so we go to g of x. Limit as x approaches 4 is going to be, looks like it's going to be at 5. So we have the square root. 8 times that whole limit value is 5, so we have the square root of 40, which you're welcome to leave, or 2 root 10. Either way. Right? So, now let's look at H. We have the limit as X approaches negative 3 of F of X plus the limit as x approaches negative 3 of g of x. And that's going to be equal to negative 6. The limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x is going to be negative 6. And then plus, and then the limit as x approaches negative 3 of g of x does not exist. 
So here our overall limit does not exist. J, we'll divide up this limit again. We'll say the limit as X approaches six of F of X over the limit as X approaches six of G of X. And so I got the limit as X approaches six of F of X. I got that to be zero. And the denominator, I got that to be five. And so zero divided by five is zero. And then remember a composition. We're gonna bring out the F part and we're gonna have the limit as X approaches negative two of G of X. And then we're gonna go ahead and find this value here. And so we're gonna have F of that value. And the limit as X approaches negative two of G of X is negative three. And then this notation here is the actual function value. And that's something that you need to remember. And so you go look for the actual function's value at negative three, and you're gonna find that f at negative three is equal to negative six. Okay, we're gonna do some more practice. So with A, you're gonna see that the limit as X approaches C, and we're gonna mess this up a little bit. We're gonna move some stuff out. I'm gonna put that three out here, minus of H at X. I'm just moving all kinds of stuff out, minus, and I'm gonna put two limit as X approaches C of G of X. And then I'm gonna make all of this to the one half power. That's perfectly legal to do all of that. And so I'm gonna have three times four, because I believe X approaches C of H of X is four minus two times. And the other part approaching G of X is negative two. And all of this is raised to the one half power. So we're gonna have 12 and then plus four is 16. So we're gonna have 16 to the one half power, which is gonna be square root of 16, which is four. So let's look at the next one. We're gonna divide this up. We're gonna have the limit as X approaches C of F of X times Five times the limit as X approaches C of G of X. So this is going to be three times five times negative two, which is going to give us negative 30. All right, so for this next one, we have limit as X approaches C of seven minus the limit as X approaches C of 
of G of X, and it's all squared. So this is our constant value, so that's going to be 7 minus negative 2, all squared, which looks like that's going to give me 9, and 9 squared is 81. And we're going to divide up all of this on the numerator. You can divide all of it up. And I think by now we can see that we're going to have 2 times the limit as x approaches c of f of x, which is going to be 3, plus 3 times the limit as x approaches h. Well, that's going to be 4 over, and then the denominator. Limit as x approaches c of h of x is going to be 4 minus negative 2. So in the numerator, that's going to be 6 plus 12, which is 18. And the denominator is going to be 6. 18 divided by 6 is 3. And we're going to do the same thing with e. We've got the limit as x approaches h of x, which is going to be 4 times, do parentheses first, f of x plus 6. Well, f of x, the limit as x approaches c of f of x is 3. 6 is that constant, so no matter what that limit is, it's going to be 6. And so 4 times 9 is going to give you 36. F, more of the same, the top. Remember, you can scoot out that exponent and say the limit as x approaches c of f of x. That's 3, and then 3 squared. over 4 minus negative 2 has that limit for g of x. And so that's going to give you 9 over 6, which is going to give you 3 halves. Okay. And for our last note, we've got another page. Never mind. So, for this next example, we're going to have, let's, ex, let's express this all with our properties. We're going to have 2 times the limit as x approaches c of f of x times the limit as x approaches c of g of x minus the limit as x approaches c of f of x to the one third plus 2 times the limit as x approaches c of g of x all squared. Okay, now let's plug in our values. We're going to have 2 times 8 times negative 4 minus h to the one-third plus 2 times negative 4 squared. 
So we're going to have negative 64 minus 2 plus 32. And all of that together should give you, let's see, 30, negative 34. All right, talking about compositions still of the function, and this is where we'll pick up uh, tomorrow. You're going to have the function, keep in mind, this is going to say f of the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. So, the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. So, we're going to come over here and say that's the limit as x approaches 2. And g of x is negative 2x. So, we're going to say that is negative 2 times 2. We're going to substitute in, and that's going to give us negative Four. So then, after we have that value, this whole thing now is negative 4. So we're going to say f at negative 4. And that's where this function comes in. So we're going to say f at negative 4 is negative 4 cubed. minus negative 4 squared plus 4 times negative 4 minus 1. <coughs> and that's going to be negative 64 minus 16 minus 16 minus 1. And that's going to give you negative 97. Okay. So, let's look at part B. Part B is going to be G at the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. So, first thing we need to do is find our limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, which means we just need to find f at 2 so let's go plug in. We've got 2 cubed minus 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 1. So that's going to be 8 minus 4 plus 8 minus 1. So all of that's going to be 16 minus 4 is 12 minus 1, 11. So now you're back to finding G at 11. G at 11 is going to be negative 2 times 11. Because we're now back to this function. And that's going to give us negative 22. Okay, so now looking at our graphs, and again, we looked at this some, but we need to look at it again. All right, so we're going to say the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. It's the first thing we do. And that limit, x approaches 
3 of g of x, we should get 1. And then we come back and we say f at 1, the actual function's value at 1, should be negative 2. All right, now for b, again, the same thing. We're going to move that g out, and we're going to talk about the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. And that limit as x approaches 1 of f of x should be negative 6. Let's make sure x approaches negative 1, move down, yep, negative 6. So the next thing you need to do is come back and find g at negative 6. <coughs> so to find g at negative 6, notice we don't have negative 6 on here. So you might have to go through y equals mx plus b and find that. We know g at negative 6 is something we've got to find. Now, remember, y'all can find slope. You can count off slope. Let's see. Here's a for sure point, and here's a for sure point. So, I'm going to go up 2 over 1, so I know m is 2. And then we could pick this for sure point here. This is over negative 1, 1, 2, 3. So, negative 1, 3. And let's plug in. So I'm going to say 3 equals 2 times negative 1 plus b. So that's going to be negative 2 over 5. So b is 5. So my line is y equals <coughs> 2x plus 5. So that's the equation of this line here. So that's what we found. Now I need to find g at negative 6. So we just plug in y equals 2 times negative 6, which is negative 12, plus 5. So that's going to give us negative 7. So g at 6 is negative 7. Okay. Now let's try c. c is going to say the function of the limit, the composite, as x approaches 1 of g of x. So... What is the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x? We've got a problem. So, let me erase. It's already there. Let me get this out of the way. So, the problem is we've got <clears throat> a hole. So what we need to do is look at the limit from the left versus the limit from the right of the other function. So in other words, this part right here does not exist. Now that does not mean the whole composite function doesn't exist. It just means that limit there doesn't exist. So what we have to do is go back and look at the left and right hand limits for the um, function f of x. So in other words, we've got to go, and this is every time, every second time, you're going to have the limit as x approaches, 
Let's see, what was this? Uh, it didn't exist at what value? What were we looking for? It did not exist at one, did it? So we're gonna look at Sorry, it did not exist at negative 1. And so we're going to look at negative 1 from the right of f of x. And we're going to see, does that equal the limit as x approaches? And where did it not approach here? At negative 3 from the right of f of x. And they're both from the right. I didn't make a mistake there. They're both coming in from the right because you need to be above that. Now, what are those values on f of, at f at x? So the limit as x approaches negative one from the right. So negative 1 from the right is negative 6. Does that equal, what's the limit from the right? Okay, for negative 3. For negative 3, it is negative 6. So... The limit does exist, and it equals negative 6. Very strange one. Okay, so let's try D. And D, we're going to move out that G again. And we have the limit as X approaches negative 3 of f of x. Okay. So, that means we're going to have g of, what's the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x? Negative 3 of f of x is going to give you negative 6. And g at negative 6 is going to be negative 7. You can go back and plug into your line 